Hi there, how you doing? I've got this weird lighting effect because it's bright outside and uh, it's dark in here. But anyway, I wanted to give you a quick update on what I've been doing on the R1250 GSA because I'm uh, going off to Spain on Monday the 13th uh, and this is what I've been doing in prep for that trip. So I spoke about getting the hard aluminium panners and I got those from Sycamore Motorrad. They're in Nottingham, somewhere like that. Um, and what I was looking for was for the little nets that go in the top of the in the top of the uh, the pannier lids, and of course you can go to Wunderlich and you can get them for I don't know sixty euros, forty euros, something like that. Um, but they're actually really easy to make yourself. All that you need is a bit of stiff wire, and that locates into two pop rivets on either side, and then you can just string a little um, elastic net between them. And you're only going to put light stuff in there. You're only going to put. I don't know, a spare pair of gloves or, um, you know, some Gore-Tex liners or something like that. Um, but that worked kind of quite nicely. And then the other things that I use as pannier bags are um, bags for life. So I got this fantastic bag for life from Geneva Airport, which has got a zip top bag. So if you go through Geneva Airport, get some duty free and get one of the zip top bags and then uh, but the one that you can see here on this video, it actually used to have a blanket in it or a duvet or something like that. Just the right size to go into one of these panniers. And that means that when you're traveling somewhere, you know, if you're doing an overnighter, you can leave one pannier that you never touch and then just pull the other stuff out on the other side. So I've been really pleased with those panniers. They're, they're, they're good. So I did the screen first and just um, the I put a Puig screen on it. It puts about an extra six seven uh, centimeters on the top that's made a big difference from from when i've been riding it um the hand guard extenders they're just cheap ones off ebay uh, it just gives your hands a little bit more protection just in the cold basically it's got heated grips of course um the other thing that i got was a, a hard toolbox that goes on the left hand side of the bike and kind of mirrors the exhaust on the right hand side Again, that was an AliExpress one, 40 quid. Seems quite robust. And uh, in that, I'll put my puncture kit uh, and a little compressor. On the R1250, it's got tubeless tyres, which was one of the big reasons that I got it. Um, means a lot because there's no way I'm going to be changing tyres. That, that, that is a skill that I'm not in keenness to um, acquire. And then finally, the thing that I did was coated it with ACF 50. Um, that's a corrosion prevention coating. It's like thicker than paraffin, but less thick than motor oil. And you spray apply it and kind of leave it on and it puts a film around the, around the bike. There's other products that can do it as well, but the ACF 50 was the one that I went for. Loads online about that. And I think if you ride in the winter, um, that would be worth something that you should do. The bike's going into Vines tomorrow. Uh, nothing wrong for it. It's going in for an engine recall. Lots of them are going in. Uh, the engine recall is for um, a situation that I know now I will never, ever get in. It only happens when the bike's in the air, you've got a fistful of throttle and the back wheel's spinning, then all of a sudden you land and uh, an undue amount of stress is put on the, on the, on the drive shaft. Will never happen to me but it's part of the recall process. So it'll go into Vines tomorrow to, to, to get that done. So this is the SatNav. It's actually a Garmin device. You know, it's branded as BMW, but it's actually a, a, a Garmin device. Um, and it sits in the cradle. I did a video about how that, how that cradle works. Um, I had a little bit of trouble with this, but the good thing is, is that the Garmin, Garmin's customer services is world-class. I do a little bit of technology and customer services, and I aspire to the day when ours is as good as theirs. You phone them up, you tell them what the problem is, and they come up with really good ideas to fix it. I was having a problem with the battery in this, and um, I figured that the battery was probably dead. It's four or five years old, I think. Um, you can go to BMW and get a battery, and they'll charge you, I think it's like 65 quid for a battery. Or you phone up Garmin and they'll sell you one for 13. Long story short, didn't actually need a battery. This is the only device that I know that only charges when it's switched on. So um, if you just, when it's asleep or switched off, plug it into the a USB charger, doesn't work, doesn't do anything. Only charges up when it's switched on. So anyway, I bought a new battery uh, 
Anyway, I got this, while I'm just remembering, I got this off the uh, uh, BMW GS Forum, um, which is fantastic. So if you ride a BMW GS bike and you're in the UK, go and join the forum. And um, I've got a few things off the for sale site. You have to pay to join the for sale site. I think it's like 15 quid for the year, um, but it's fantastic. So I got my uh, sat nav off there. I got an, an all weather suit off there that was was still uh, had the price tag on it for 45 quid and the guy sold it me for 25. And I got the uh, tank bag as well, that, that, that tank bag there really fantastic i would really recommend that you join that site i'll put a link to it in the uh, in the in the notes below so this is a 2019 bike it was bought before the pandemic and then sat around during the pandemic basically not doing anything it's on about 2400 miles um it's in great condition um perfect condition the only thing that i've noticed about it is that the battery is a little bit weak and all of the electronics on it, so the TFT, your sat-nav, and I've told you about the sat-nav situation, um, that does a, a big drain on the battery when it's sitting around not doing anything. Um, and I've noticed that the voltage on the battery is pretty low. So at the end of this, perhaps as I'm even talking about this, I'll show you a speeded up version of me changing the battery. The battery is really easy to change. Um, I use a place uh, called Tainer batteries. They're up in North Wales. I've got batteries for the i3 and, you know, whenever I want a battery, you can order it at lunchtime and it'll arrive first thing in the morning the next day. So I've got an Exide battery, which will go into this um, and then I'll take it over to Vines tomorrow. I forgot to mention earlier that uh, the, the thing that's been the biggest pain in the arse is connecting all the tech together. So you've got your sat nav Bluetooth, you've got your um, your uh, headphones on your uh, helmet, it's Bluetooth. The TFT screen is Bluetooth and you've got your phone as well. And there's a sequence that you uh, are supposed to go through so that it all maps together. I'll put the link into the guy's video. He does it very well. He explains it all. And then he actually does the magic right at the end. I've not been able to get it to work yet. Um, what you want to do is um, get it to the point where you can listen to music on your on your headphones that are in your helmet and then use the little wheel that's on the left hand side of the uh, of the handlebar to be able to go through your music you know as you're going along um, and also be getting voice um, prompts from your navigation just doesn't seem to kind of sit together as nicely as I expected it to and to be honest I think some of it's redundant now you know when these came out um, I don't think that the navigation tools on phones were probably as good, but now they're, you know, world class. To some point, this is redundant. What you do actually have from this, though, is that you have downloaded maps. So you don't need an internet connection. You don't need wireless. You don't need um, a phone connection so that you've still got maps on this. OK, and then finally, the uh, I'm going on a trip back down to southern Spain. I'll be leaving Portsmouth on Monday the 13th of February. It's a 9.30 sailing, goes down to Santander, uh, gets in Wednesday morning. Then I'm going to go from uh, Santander down to a place near Zaragoza. I'm not actually going to Zaragoza. I couldn't get a hotel room. So I'm going to go to near Zaragoza and then off to Barcelona to see a couple of pals that I know in Barcelona. A uh, big night out in Barcelona. And then from Barca coming west heading west through the Sierra Nevada mountains, probably stay somewhere like Albacet or Guadix, and then scoot down into Marbella. So it should be in Marbella on Saturday night. I don't know what day that is. The 18th, something like that. Um, hopefully I've put a map up. So if you've got any questions about what I'm doing here, um, just ping them through. Thanks so much for following me. It's really appreciated. And uh, we'll catch up soon. Thanks. Take care.